Welcome everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about why you should always assume you're wrong. So I found an article, it was circulating again on Facebook. Usually I'll put a link into the descriptions. This one has a video to accompany it. It's by Donald Hoffman. Donald Hoffman is a professor of cognitive science at the University of California, Irvine. And it was in, from 2019. This was interesting. I haven't really done a deep dive on him. I think he's got a book for sale. He might be uh, questioning reality and with the holographic universe type thing. But this was an interesting article. It's sometimes the advice I give to people. And why should you always assume you're wrong? Science. When it comes to scientific theory, or your personal life, be sure to question everything. And I've always said this to my friends, and I think this is a good thing to uh, make a part of your life. And I don't mean the quick reaction things we use our intuition for, you know, play some word game semantics, and yes, uh, you can use your in intuition especially in quick thinking situations. But I'm talking about more of the basics and fundamentals of life when you're thinking about things and when you're forming your beliefs. So one of the points is the theories we build to navigate the world, both scientifically and in our personal lives, all contain con assumptions. They're a critical part of scientific theory. Cognitive psychologist Donald Hoffman urges us to always question those assumptions. In this way, by challenging ourselves, we come to a deeper understanding of the task at hand. Historically, humans have come to some of our greatest discoveries by simply questioning, questioning assumed information. And there are lots of things filtered out through certain f f philosophic, uh, you know, viewpoints and um, worldviews. But basically, every once in a while, I like to go back and question the things I believe. And the things I believe most strongly, I want to question. And it gives you a, some insight and introspective look at how you come to your decisions. And is this a silly belief? Uh, and if it is a strong belief, how silly are my justifications for it? So you get to kind of analyze it. I'll start reading now. And I think it's from a book or from a transcript. Like I said, I'll put the link for the article and the video in the description. It's on the same page. It's from Big Think. In science and in our personal life, the theories that we build to navigate the world always have assumptions. And the theories depend critically on those assumptions. If we change the assumptions, we will get a very different picture of the world. And in the case of science... The assumptions are the place where the theory stops. Explanation stops. So if you are a, psych a physicist, for example, you will say, please grant me, say, space and time and quantum fields. And if you grant me that, then I can explain a whole lot of things. I could try to explain chemistry, biology, and so forth. Then we might have to go deeper. We find that, say, general relativity and quantum field theory are in conflict. And so we need a deeper theory that we might use to get both. And so many physicists are trying to find a deeper set of assumptions, not to assume space-time, but to assume something deeper and show that space-time emerges. So it's all about knowing exactly what your, in fact, the assumption are the critical part in a scientific theory and in personal theory. Knowing what your assumptions are is, in some sense, the most essential first move. We always have to critically examine our assumptions. Sadly, we don't all do that, do we? I'll continue. In the case of science, we call them assumptions, but I call them miracles. Because from the point of view of science, the assumptions are where the explanation stops. The theory has nothing deeper to say. So why... In Einstein's theory, does space and time exist? 
There's no answer. It's a miracle. Grant me that miracle, then I can explain all this other beautiful stuff that Einstein explained. We're now looking for a deeper miracle, right? Something deeper than space-time, for which then space-time will not be a miracle. Space-time will emerge as an explanation. But whatever that deeper thing is, will be the new miracle. So all of our explanations in personal life and in science always start with assumptions. But let's call them what they are. They're miracles of the theory. And so you have to choose those miracles very, very carefully. And once you've chosen them very, very carefully, the structure will follow from that. So that's why they're so important. All the time, I and my colleagues, in the work we're doing in science, I'm always going back and questioning my assumptions. And here's one reason why we should do that. If we look back at human history, we see that we are quite consistent. We get it wrong. <laughs> we assume the Earth was flat until 2,500 years ago. 2,400 years ago, everybody thought the Earth was flat. We made assumptions that were false, and they led to theories that were false. Then we thought the Earth was the center of the universe for the next 2,000 years, and we were not willing to question that assumption. It took brave people like Galileo and Cornipicus to question it. Some people were burned at the stake. Galileo was in prison. Yep. We don't like to question our assumptions. They are very, very dear to us, and we don't like to do it. But it's the most important thing that we could possibly do. And I would say moving forward that in science and spirituality, the relationship between science and spirituality, spiritual traditions have insights that have been gained over thousands of years of practice and meditation and so forth. But they have their own assumptions. And it's very important when we're dealing with the biggest questions of who we are, why are we here, why is there evil, what is life about, the big big questions that the spiritual traditions examine. It seems there, more than anywhere else, we need to really look at our assumptions, try to make them as precise as possible so that we can find out precisely where we're wrong. And I would say that was the bottom line with assumptions. Question them. Make your assumptions as absolutely precise as you possibly can, and then confidently go wherever those assumptions take you and find out precisely where you're wrong, and then go back and modify your assumption. I always assume I'm wrong. Looking back at human history, we're consistent as I said. There's no reason for me to believe I am an exception. I'm almost surely wrong. But the idea is to keep questioning assumptions, and then getting a deeper and deeper, more comprehensive understanding. Now, what I liked about this article is how he starts calling things a miracle and then talking about spirituality. I was interested in some of the uh, ideas uh, Sam Harris had about claiming spirituality again, uh, even in science. And I'm a proponent of that. I think it's a good idea. But this is why I think it's important. I mean, our beliefs are very important. They could be dangerous. And you don't have to have evil intent behind you. It doesn't have to be the answer for why we're here, why we're evil. This is how we are as a people. So making it part of your regimen, making it part of the things you do when you're sipping your coffee or um, you're in between TV shows and you're trying to get a grasp on things, maybe... You know, you're. Because I know there is the difference between people who are, you know, looking to dive inward and fix the things wrong with them, or smooth out the edges, and they're just people who are oblivious to what they represent. And it's hard to convince people to just say, "Oh, you know, you got to think of it a certain way." So you try to make an antidote. You know, you try to you know, explain it in a better way where it's not so much confrontation. But if you can get them at a young age, people to just always question things. It breeds critical thinkers. It inoculates people to really stupid ideas, and it could really be a benefit. I really 
like the tone of the article and how, like I said, it starts playing with the word miracle and using spirituality. I don't view um, spirituality or, you know, any supernatural type thing as having in much weight. But I do assume I'm wrong about that belief, and I will re-examine things. I will look deeper into things like I would any thing that uh, I would see somewhat important, because I would love for people to have superpowers, ESP, telekinesis, uh, astral projection, remote viewing. It would be awesome to be able to heal with crystals and whatever, but sorry, it's not there. It's not practical. It's not even in the realm of me assuming it's something I would consider. Right? I mean, just, just, but I will question it, just like uh, most of my beliefs in that there's no God, or you know, what conspiracies uh, hold any weight, because even things like that, you want to question, because there are conspiracies out there, there are, you know, I found there is a reason to, to have a legitimate concern, you become informed about these things. And it can lead to giant rabbit holes. So again, as I said in the beginning, I'm not here to uh, get into a semantic battle. But yes, there, I've actually read studies that show you uh, you should trust your instinct most of the time. It's about a 15% uh, success rate increase. But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, We trust our instincts and we go to grab the iron that's falling on the floor. <laughs> I mean... You know, yeah, they help us survive. They got us here to revolution, but you know, we're thinkers now. We live in societies where we have social contracts, and people just blurt out shit, or they regurgitate something they saw, and it's part of your belief. You're, it's in your tribe. It's part of your, uh, you know, uh, youth or growing up. You've been indoctrinated with it. So go back, uh, question that assumption. Go and examine it. Get as precise as you can, like he said. I like to say, search for the truth until it hurts and keep searching, even if it's you. You have to be honest with everything. And again, some people don't have the mindset to be in that mood right now or to deal with that, which is why, you know, hey, I love everybody and people got families and children and they're working hard. But what eventually happens is somewhere down the line there's a crisis and they got to go for mental health or you got to take uh, prescriptions or something. There's a toll on everything. and We think you should really be introspective. Learn some breathing meditation techniques and you don't have to do it to where you float away and, uh, you know, entertain other uh, somewhat crazier theories of what you could do with meditation because I find it ridiculous but even in things I promote and I agree with I stop where the science stops so I would say the breathing technique I promote gives visual acuity it helps uh, with the you know your, for your body to respond and these would be things to scientifically I could prove I'm not telling you you could meditate and you're not going to be able to you don't have to eat. You can live on sunlight for fucking the rest of your life. I mean, just fucking ridiculous. But people believe it. And just like the flat earth getting big now, and, you know, I think most of them are jerk offs in the sense that they just they like to be contrarians or just jump on it. But we're humans, right? So everybody should go forward. Assuming you're wrong. In a general sense of things, you know, why do I don't like this person, or am I upset about this? What are my political views? And if you have time and you got that, you know, determination to dig deep, I would recommend always assume you're wrong. Be good, everybody. Look forward to doing another one. I'll talk to you all later. My best to you and yours.